out in your own life, in your own marriage, amen, at your workplace. It's a spirit that has to be cultivated in your life. You have to know the attacks. You have to know the schemes. The Bible says don't be ignorant what of his schemes. Don't be ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. Don't be surprised at the fiery attacks upon you. You have to have a mindset. I expect the attacks. I expect the accusations. I expect my marriage to be attacked. I expect my church to be attacked. I expect these things. And because I expect these things, I have to create a heart to bow down before my God. I'm telling you this morning, if you don't learn to bow, if you don't learn to submit, you will be in trouble. Amen. I'm just saying, you will be in trouble. I don't care how good it is right now. If you continue to walk with your God, there will come a point in your life, in your relationship with God, in your family, that you have got to, the, the only answer is to break. Amen. The only answer, that the one and only answer that will save you from going astray. I read about an apostasy here in this Bible that even the elect, even chosen people that, 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 that are on fire for God, in the end times, there will be even the elect that could go astray if they don't be very careful. Do you see the temptation? Do you see the time period that you and I live in where this battle is going on like never, never before? The pressure is going to get great. But our call is to learn the power, shame, of brokenness. You've been so, through some things lately, haven't you? But you're here this morning. You're here this morning, Shay, because you're learning the power of brokenness. You have a humble spirit. You have a humble heart, Shay. That's why you're here this morning. Because life could have turned you away, good, real quick. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. There's a call on this man's life. I only know we're called. And that call lives inside of us. It grows inside of us. It grows inside of the child of God. You can't get rid of it. But the pressure gets so great. What goes on in our world and our society, it gets so great that the tendency is to go aside, go astray. We're here this morning because we're learning the power of a humble spirit. Turn over to 2 Timothy this morning. Let's look at some scriptures quickly this morning. Matthew 24, as I've been talking about, says that you and I are not to be misled in these end days. We have to understand God's ways. We have to understand the way of God in truth. <clears throat> Second Timothy. Just want to read some scriptures this morning. <clears throat> Chapter 1, verse 7. <clears throat> verse 6 this morning. If we read verse 6, this is Paul to Timothy. For, uh, for this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God. We're here to kindle afresh God's gift in our lives, in all of our lives. Amen which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Other versions might be NES. It says discipline. Yeah. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of discipline. We're to be a disciplined people. But he says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner. But what does he say? But join with me. Paul says to his young disciple, join with me in what? In suffering. Join. In other words, Paul saying to Timothy, suffering is a part of this, is a, it's part of the, the Christian's purpose. You've got to get used to it, Timothy. 
Join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy call, calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, grace which was granted us in Christ Jesus for all eternity. But now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality <coughs> to light through the gospel. Praise God. For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. Paul had a call on his life. Notice verse uh, 12. For this reason, because there was a call, there was a reason, there's a call. For this reason, I also what? I suffer. I suffer these things. But I am not ashamed. <coughs> For I know who I have believed in, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Paul says, I suffer many things for the sake of the gospel. But I'm not ashamed of these things. I'm going to continue to run my course. I'm going to continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I know who I have believed in. I'm convinced that he is able to guard. There was an entrusting. There was a belief in God. God, I know you're in control. I know you're leading me. I know I've been given a call. And despite the afflictions, despite the beatings, despite the persecutions, I submit myself to you. I entrust myself to you. Why, God? Because I'm know you are able to save me to the end. Amen. Amen. Yes. Do you see the mindset that's got to be cultivated in your life? God, you began the good work in me, and I know I'm convinced that you who began that good work, you will be faithful to complete that work. Yes? Yes. 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 Guess how that work is going to be completed. Amen. Sitting in the backyard, sipping on the cappuccinos. <laughs> <laughs> swimming in a swimming pool, eating breakfast burritos. <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess how the work of God that God began in you, guess how the work's going to be complete? Anybody understand where I'm going? Through suffering, through persecution, through affliction. Through trials, through testing, from you and I, when it comes, submitting our lives to Him. When the trial comes, we have to learn to, first of all, acknowledge the call. God is greater than I am. God is higher than I am. His ways are higher than I am. I entrust my life and everything that I am going through. I entrust my life to Him. I submit my life to Him.